Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire. Sorry that I've been on a little hiatus lately. I just need a little bit of time off. And please forgive me if this video is a little rusty. It's hard to get back into the swing of things. In today's video, I have two things. I'm actually first going to show how to create a clear shaker card. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a product release close up at the newest products from Clearly Besotted, which I'm using in this card here. So I've wanted to make a card that was completely made up of a shaker pocket for some time now. And I used to do this with vellum in the past. So I'm finally getting around to it. And this actually holds a gift card inside. So let's go ahead and get started with our coloring. I'm going to be using the new Clearly Besotted Best Birthday Set. I just thought these birthday balloons were so much fun, these animal balloons. Now I went ahead and stamped a bunch of the birthday balloons um, with the My Favorite Things Black Hybrid Ink. That's my favorite ink for Copic coloring. And I've stamped it on Nina White cardstock. Now to do the coloring here, I'm gonna go super quick. I am coloring the pig first with R30, which is my lightest kind of peachy pink color. Then I'm coming in with my darkest peachy pink, which is R22, and just adding some little bit of dark color here and there into some of the areas where I would want a shadow. Now I need to blend this and add a little bit of depth around the outside edges of the balloon. I'm using a medium shade here, this is R20, but I'm realizing that that's not adding enough color. So I just need to be slightly darker. So what I'm doing is touching my R20, which is lighter, to the darker R22 to pick up some of that darkness and you end up with a shade in between. This is a great solution if you don't have many markers and you want a color that's in between two that aren't blending very well. Now the last thing I do when I color a Copic image is come with my darkest color and just go into those tiny little corners just to add a little bit of depth there. Now before we move on to the shaker pocket, I just wanted to color one more balloon. Yes, I tend to do my Copic coloring as fast as I can just because my time is limited with kids. So you could spend more time blending, but you don't have to, it's totally up to you. Now I first colored this guy lightly with C1 and I'm adding a little bit of a medium color to the edge with T3. Now I know those colors don't really go together per se, but my C3 is dry. So I went ahead and just made these blend. You can really make almost any colors blend together with Copics. Then I came back with C1 and blended that all out so it would be smooth. Now I'm adding some T5 to the little stripes there. And then I want to get a color in between the T3 and T5 just to add a little more depth. So again, I'm touching the lighter marker to the tip of the darker marker. And that gives me a, like a medium shade to help with that depth. And then I just blend it all out by going over it with C1. And here's my trick for coloring cheeks. I just go right over whatever color I've already done with R30 and it kind of moves that gray aside. Then I add a little bit of R22 to it to give it a little more depth. And that's a great way to get soft, rosy cheeks that blend with the background color is just to go right over the color. Copics move each other so you can do that. Now for the panda, I just left him white and add a little bit of that rosy color for the cheeks and that was a very quick one to color. Now I do like to go in and make the eyes of my Copic colored images a little bit darker. So I have this set of Copic multi-liner pens. These are really nice black pens and there's a variety of tips on this. And so I'm using one of the super fine tips here and I'm just making his eyes darker. Now you could trace over the whole image to really kind of define that black edge because most Copic friendly black inks aren't that dark, but I'm gonna skip that step here and just do it for the eyes so the eyes stand out. Then I'm using a white gel pen. This is a fine tip white gel pen just to make the eyes pop out. So that really makes a big difference. You can see between the pig on the left and the pig on the right, it really makes it pop. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out each of these guys. Now there are matching dies, so you could use the dies to cut these out. I just prefer the look that you get when cutting them out by hand, and I actually enjoy doing the fussy cutting. So I'm gonna cut out all of the balloons. Now it's time to create the shaker card itself. I've seen little gift bags like this that are clear with lots of fun things in it, and I wanted to show you how easy it is to create this with the We Are Memory Keepers Fuse Tool. I've shown how in past videos how to create shaker windows that are flat using this fuse tool. However, if you don't have the fuse tool, you can also use a sewing machine to sew around the edges. Okay, so the fuse tool is very inexpensive, and I think it's really worth the money if you make a lot of shaker pockets or if you do any kind of scrapbooking because you can use this to create pockets on your scrapbook pages. So the tool you just plug in, it heats up pretty fast. It's got this little stand to put it on. There are a couple different tips that you can use. One seals and cuts. This one just seals. 
Now for the plastic, I like to use my Avriel stamp pockets. This is what I store my stamps in. It's a nice thick plastic and I find that it seals very well. You can also use scrapbook page protectors or two pieces of plastic. Just try out what you may have. Now I want to make sure that I end up with a pocket that fits into an envelope. So I've cut a piece of white cardstock to be about five by three and three quarters, slightly smaller than a note card. And I'm going to use this as a guide to go ahead and create my pocket. So I'm putting it between the two pieces of plastic, which happens to be inside of this pocket. So there's a plastic on top of it and below it. And I am going to seal around the edges of this cardstock because that's my guide. Okay, so this is the little tool. It has a slit in it. And you just run your fuse tool down that little slit. So I'm lining the slit up to be just outside of that white cardstock. And I'm going to take my tool and press it kind of firmly and go slowly along it. And everywhere I run this, it will seal those two pieces of plastic together. Make sure you have some scrap paper behind this so you don't hurt your work surface. Okay, so now when I remove this, you'll see the dotted line on the plastic, and that shows where it's sealed. And I did that just outside of that white cardstock. Again, I'm gonna remove that white cardstock. It's just a guide for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same thing on three sides. We'll leave the fourth side open so we can add the fun things inside. So again, I'm lining that slit up to be just next to the edge of that white cardstock. And I'm going to press kind of firmly here and just go kind of slow and just seal right along there. Again, try whatever clear plastic sheets you may have. I think different things will work for this. And you can experiment with how much pressure and how fast you need to go to seal it. And I find that the seal is pretty good that you get from this, so you don't have to worry about things falling out. Now when the recipient gets it, they'll just have to cut it open to get the fun things out of the inside. Okay, so now I'm doing my third edge just right outside of that white cardstock. I'm just gonna go ahead and seal that up. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and remove the white cardstock from the inside. That again was just a guide. We'll use it again here in a minute, but we still need to fill in all of our fun things. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut away the excess plastic on the outside edges. We don't need all that hanging off. And I'm going to trim it so about an eighth of an inch kind of hangs off to the, to the side of our seal line. You don't wanna cut through the seal line because you might end up undoing it. So I'm just cutting right next to about an eighth of an inch from it. Since it's kind of hard to see the results on this clear piece, I'm going to put this gray board behind it so you can see the three seal lines around the edge. Now for that fourth side, I need to trim it down a little bit, so I'm going to get out my white cardstock guide that we created. Remember, this is a little bit smaller than a note card, so I know that the finished product will still fit in an envelope. So I'm going to put this down on my trimmer and cut the plastic pocket, that open side, just a little bit outside of that white guide. Just enough room so that we can seal that side once we've filled it up. Okay, so now it's time to do the fun part and fill this pocket with whatever you want. I decided to put a gift card in here. This is going to be for my teenage daughter because she worked really hard on her grades and she did a good job. So I'm giving her a gift card to our local ice cream shop. So I am put a little note on a piece of white cardstock and I'm gonna glue that to the back of the card. Now this allows me to have a clear pocket. If you'd rather have a place to write your message, you could glue a bigger cardstock piece to the back of the entire pocket when you're done, but I thought this would be fun. So I'm going to put the card in there, a little cattywampus, and then add some sequins. I am using a few sequin packs from Lucy Abrams. I like the packs of sequins that she has to offer because there are other things in there like little beads, and there's a mix of shapes, so there's stars and hearts and beads and such. And she also offers some lighter colors or softer colors of sequins, which I think is really helpful when you're creating a card with a lot going on. You don't want them to be too distracting. So I put a pinch of white, pink, and silver sequins into my pockets. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and slide in my little gift card, and I want it to be off center so that it moves around nicely. You could also put tiny little die cut hearts or other things in here also. Okay, now it's time to seal this off. So now I am going to get my fuse tool. And to be honest with you, I couldn't find that guide. You know, that silver piece with the little slit that you run your tool? It's somewhere on my desk. I can't find it. So I'm just using my T-roller and it worked just fine. So I'm just sealing off that fourth side. You should see how bad my desk is. I, I had a hard time pulling this card together because I'm just not into the swing of things yet. So now we have all four sides sealed and I have my little gift card in there with a message on the back and all this fun stuff shakes around on the inside. So now we can decorate the front of it. I'll be honest with you, I probably should have done this first before filling the pocket and sealing off the edges, but this is just kind of how it came together. So I'm going to go ahead and put a backing on each of these colored stamped images. One of the not so great things about coloring images with Copics is the color shows through the other side. 
that's okay. It just means you're doing it right, that you're adding lots of color. But I just want to put a white backing on the back of each of these. So I went ahead and stamped a, another of the same image and cut it out, and I'm gluing it to the back. So you can see the back is nice and white. So when you flip this card over, you just see the white instead of the coloring that shows through. And by the way, you'll see there's another little animal balloon here. I made a couple of these cards, so I had a few different animals, and I just decided which to use on this one in particular. Okay, so now I need to glue these onto the front of my clear pocket. And I want to be careful about what adhesive I use because I don't want the adhesive to show through to the other side. So I'm going to use this little Xyron sticker maker. This is really a handy tool that I don't use often enough. I really like it. You just drop the die cut piece or stamp piece into, this, into the sticker maker, pull it out the other side, and it has adhesive covering the whole back side. It basically turns it into a sticker. So now I can just pop each of these pieces into the sticker maker, pull it out, and then stick them onto the front of this clear pocket. Because it puts clear adhesive on the entire back side of the piece, you don't see the adhesive on the other side when we flip this pocket over. So it's at this point that I realized I probably should have decorated the front of this pocket before I filled it in with all those goodies on the inside because I need to add the strings on the balloons. There is a stamp in the stamp set that does the strings and you could have stamped it with black stays on ink onto the front of this clear pocket. But since I have already filled this, I'm just using my black Sharpie to add the strings. It turned out fine, but it definitely would have been easier if I would have done this before adding the sequence in the gift card inside. At this point, point, I also had a hard time deciding what to do for a greeting on the front. I probably could have skipped the greeting, but this is what I ended up on. I wanted to stamp the word celebrate onto a piece of white cardstock, just a white cardstock strip. So I have this image that says celebrate good times, but I just cut off the word celebrate, and I'm going to stamp that with black Hero Arts dye ink. By the way, this image is from one of the new Clearly Besotted stamp sets, which I'll show you a little bit later on in this video. So after I've stamped this, I wanted an exclamation point. There was another image in that same set, stamp set that said cheers with an exclamation point. So I'm carefully inking up just the exclamation point only and stamping that next to celebrate. You could have drawn that in with a pen, but I knew I would probably mess it up. Now I'm using my scissors to cut one end of this into a nice little finished V. And then the other end I will tuck underneath one of the balloons. Again, I'm going to use my sticker maker to put adhesive on the back of this. Now, if you do not have uh, the sticker maker, whatever adhesive that you have that is clearest or will show up the least on the other side would be good. You could also just glue a piece of a small piece of white cardstock to the back of the shaker card, which would hide all the adhesive. But I wanted this to be completely see through. It's really up to you how you do it. So there is the finished guy. You can kind of shake them around. You can still see the message on the back. And when she opens this, she just cuts it open and she can get her little gift card card out. Something fun and interesting to do that makes, you know, you incorporating a gift card into your card a little more interesting. That finishes up the card for today, but before we go, I wanted to give you a closer look at the newest release from Clearly Besotted. Clearly Besotted is one of my favorite stamp companies, but I have never done a video showcasing them, so I wanted to do that here. What I like about Clearly Besotted is they have a look. All their stamps has a, have a very similar look, and it involves this very thin line on their images, which I think makes it look very classy, even when it's something that's fun like the one I just showed you. Here's another one from this release that I really like, Magnolia Blooms. This leaf image I think is fantastic. I'm hoping to do a video where I use that with Perfect Pearls on some dark colored cardstock and share some tips for using Perfect Pearls. This is another stamp set that would be good for using some of your more unique embossing powders or for a tone on tone background. I really, really, really like that leaf image. I think there's a lot that you can do with it. You can make feminine or masculine cards with it. I also think that the style of the sentiments in this set work for masculine or feminine cards, and those are hard to find. Okay, so Clearly Besotted is known for creating beautiful, beautiful, beautiful floral images that are great for coloring techniques. This set is no different. What's unique about it, though, is that they're smaller images. So Clearly Besotted has lots of large floral images, um, floral images, but this is a set of smaller ones, and they do have that thin outline that I love so much about their stamps. So this is a great set to practice any watercolor Copic coloring that you may want to try. And you can team a few different flowers up together on one card. 
Okay, so next are two small sets that I have in one stamp pocket here. The Bear Hugs, which would be great for any kind of baby card or happy card. Nice thing about this little bear is he's easy to color. Then we also have the fairy tale ending stamp set. The floral image in here is beautiful and it would be fun to stamp twice next to each other to get kind of a circle of flowers and then stamp a greeting inside. By the way, there are dies that coordinate with a lot of these stamp sets. I just have the stamps right now. I also really like that Clearly Besotted always offers a few smaller stamp sets which are a little more cost effective than the big ones. There is also this Happy Travel set. This one I think works also for masculine cards, so you could team it up with some of those masculine greetings that I showed you on the earlier set. And then finally we have the Raise a Glass stamp set. This is the one where I got my sentiments for the card that I showed you earlier. Now the sentiments here I think are really fun. What's neat about the glasses and the little images that we have here is you layer them on top of each other. So you can stamp the glass outline in like a black or gray ink and then stamp the, the drink on the inside with one of these solid images and then put maybe the little orange slice or the umbrella on the side of it. So there are a few other kind of cocktail stamp sets out there but this one I think is a little more unique and you could create some really clean and simple and classy cards with it. So there you have uh, how to make a clear shaker card and a look at the new Clearly Besotted images. If you are interested in the, any of these products, I link below in my YouTube description and over on my blog. Thanks for watching this extra long video and I hope you'll return again soon.